Hello and welcome to the Weight Free Wellness Podcast. I'm Tara Bachland, the founder of the Weight Free Wellness Podcast. And today is such a perfect day that I decided to do this recording outside. So you may be hearing some birds in the background, maybe a chicken every once in a while. Although I did just learn that, you know, to not go barefoot around chickens, they might think that your toe is a worm or something delicious to eat. So just a heads out there, heads up out there for anyone who's walking around in sandals around chickens. But anyways... So we are back on track here at Weight Free Wellness. I was gone for a while, uh, like I mentioned before, moving, and then we were in Columbia for a little bit. And before you think I was off on some luxurious vacation, I just wanted to head it off at the pass that we were on an adventure. And it's so amazing how this all ties in. I had no idea how much this would all tie in, but we were actually going to Columbia because we started up a coffee business with a young man who's originally from Colombia and a a small tribe in the Andes. And I learned so much. It was absolutely amazing. And as I listened to this podcast by Lori Rose, she's a contributing podcaster with Weight Free Wellness. It just is so interesting how cultures who are, are living in areas like this, you know, we talk about preserving the earth, using herbs and so forth. And it's just natural. It's just a way of life for people like this. And the Colombian Coffee Connection is really, really focused on not only bringing you micro batch specialty coffees, but also really supporting the farmers. They go beyond fair trade, and it's something that I had no idea that I was going to be a part of. I thought I was literally along for the ride, but seeing these people and seeing the the intention that they put into making a quality product, and just wanting to be paid a fair price. Just, I couldn't help but want to become involved. So to start out with, I'm just putting a word out on Weight Free Wellness about the Colombian Coffee Connection, and I highly recommend that you get on the list. It's going to be a subscription service for really high-end coffee, and you'll definitely want to be on the top of the list. So I'll be sharing more. There was so much to the trip that was absolutely amazing, and um, it could be a podcast in and of itself. So maybe that will be, be the what will happen someday. But this podcast is really terrific. I love Lori's podcast. Uh, the content, the energy. She interviews herbalist Cammie McBride about how to use and incorporate herbs really naturally and easily, easily with your family. So here you go. Enjoy. Hello, everyone. This is Lori Rose with Lori Rose Holistic as a contributing podcaster with Weight Free Wellness. And I have a treat for you guys today. We have herbalist and author Cami McBride. Cami, how are you? Hey, Lori Rose. I'm oh, so glad, glad to be here with you today. <laughs> so, let me tell you guys why it's such an honor to have Cami here with us. So, before I e-met (laughs) Cammie through her free video training. Um, I knew that I liked herbs and plants, and I knew that I didn't like to take pharmaceuticals or use common everyday products, but I didn't know how to merge those two things. So it was pretty much just me eating food and suffering without body care products and knowing how to use herbs in my life. But once I saw Cammie's free video training and I took her courses, she has this amazing, passionate way of teaching you how to make herbs, not something you use when you're sick, she does that too, but something that you do every single day in your life with your family as part of your self-care in your community and so I'm just really excited that you guys are going to get to hear a tidbit of Cammie's wisdom and passion and she's going to let us know the four pillars of making herbalism part of your life so Cammie thank you for your time and dedicating your time to us today and for joining us I can't wait to hear what you have to say All right, Laurie Rose, thank you. Yeah, so we talked about this being, uh, talking about the four pillars of herbal home care. And, you know, one of the things is, I've been teaching herbal medicine for more than 25 years. And so I've had a chance to really look at what 
what is it that, what's the difference between one of my students that is just like, yes, I got it, I'm on it, and someone who's like, oh yeah, I know there's a lot of good stuff in that notebook over there, right? And so I really made that a study. And what I found is that um, it's like the, 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 the students that kind of just waited until they were sick and then they were like looking everything up, you know, like kind of one-off sickness and then like, oh, I'm going to take, take care of it. They weren't doing as well as the ones who had herbs integrated into everyday life. And so I just got really serious about focusing on, okay, well, there's, you know, there's hundreds of ways to prepare herbs and bring herbs into our life, right? But which ones are cover the most ground and which ones um, are easy for our kids to use and which ones could you actually develop a relationship like every day and so there's there's lots of things this isn't the only these aren't the only pillars to herbal home care but they're the ones that I've kind of just that I love and that I've kind of locked onto and that is um, activating your spice rack that's number one number two is your herbal teas number three is your herbal oils and then I'll save number four to a little bit later. <laughs> so um, <laughs> you brought up a lot of really important points because I think a lot of people first get interested in herbalism as a replacement of pharmaceuticals. Like instead of taking that pharmaceutical for this ailment, what herb can I take for that ailment? And that's not really what herbalism is at all. And another important point you bring up is that we tend to be information overload, right? We tend to want to no, 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 but not do and put that knowledge into practice that is actually helping us. And so I love how practical your tips are and how easy it was to motivate my kids and even my husband to get into this stuff. So let's just dive right in. You want to start with number one? Yeah, we can go with the spice rack. And you're right, you bring up the... Of course, it's natural for people to say, oh, I want to take this herb for that, replace that drug. But part of what we're doing with herbalism is we're doing a whole cultural deprogramming. We're, you know, I was raised with that symptom, symptom suppressive attitude, symptom suppressive mindset, take this to get rid of that. That's, that's how I grew up. And that's how my entire family grew up. And in fact, when I was young, every elder in my life was on some sort of medication, right? So it's, of course, it's just like in us to reach for that. But we are, we're, we're, we're deprogramming. With the, it's a very deep, even myself, sometimes I have to say, oh, yeah, what's the root cause? What's underneath? And so one of the one of the just really great ways to get your kids and your family and everybody involved is to get into herbal teas. And I'm not going to go into like, oh, you need to drink this tea or you need to drink that tea. You can go on over to my blog at livingawareness.com or Lori's blog. Or, I mean, there's herbal tea or you can look in the herbal kitchen. There's great tea recipes. There's the tea recipes like everywhere now. But what I want to talk about is your is is your tea time, right? Can you is and setting up that you know, set making your teas beautiful, making them what I like to do is I have a refreshment station in my home. Do you have a refreshment station in your home? And if you set up a space that's pretty, like I use different glasses, different pitchers, different teapots and nice, you know, put a little placemat out and when people and if it's a place where people have to walk by when they come in they're just like oh what's that you know and they they drink it and so in the winter if it's uh you know uh, more of a winter tea or in the summer it's like a lemonade if you set up that refreshment station and first you can have it be like more juice you know <laughs> And then slowly you just start adding more and more tea to that juice. <laughs> and pretty soon they won't even know the difference. And so they'll just be you. It, it's just a, it's a ritual. It's a, it's a place and it's a culture. You, you have a place where people can refresh or you, you set up a tea time. Like for us in the wintertime, we love tea time in the evening. We have our tea in the evening. So what I want you to think about in your life is where can you have that tea time? What does tea time look for you, look like for you? And to just incorporate those teas into your daily life because people will start to notice, oh, if I drink this rose cucumber tea, I feel cooler, right? If I drink this ginger tea, I feel warmer. And they'll, it'll tune them into their body. It'll tune them uh, into the seasons. And they'll, they'll start to develop that relationship with tea. But you've got to create the container for the people around you to drink it. 
Yeah, I really loved that part of the class because I was kind of one of those people, I have a lot easier time in my professional world as compared to my home and mothering, homemaking world. It just doesn't come that naturally to me. But when you brought that up in the class and I was like, I'm gonna get teapots and I'm gonna get three different teapots in different colors and I'm gonna put them on the table. And you're like, you know, put the little garnish on there. And it's like, beauty matters. And it made me reconnect to making my home beautiful. Not only that, when my kids walked in and they see a different teapot each day, they don't even care what's in it, they're gonna drink it. You know, like it's fun, it's mm -hmm. beautiful, it's new. And it, you really helped me embrace homemaking and my home and serving. Mm -hmm. Now, I was always been connected to my food. Like here, I'm going to cook you good food and eat this. But taking that time to slow down and sit and be still and teaching my kids to do the same thing in this go, go, go world, it was mm. it's amazing. It, mm. and it it's, you know you can do it in just one day. Like get one teapot, do this one time a day, and it's amazing how how relaxing and how much more peace you feel, and you're connecting with the herbs. Yeah, so you just go to the thrift store. You can always, it's like so much fun to get new teapots at the thrift store and new glasses, and it doesn't, doesn't have to be expensive, you know? Yeah, and another, it was so, it was funny to me about the personal connections that it helped me make, because my mother-in-law is very homemaker, and she just loves that. Um, and so we, we didn't really merge or mesh in that way. But when I got into teapots, she was the first person I talked to, I was like, I'm into teapots now. And so she was like, teapots and me teapots. And it was like, it helped us. It helped my relationship with my family. You know, it was really just this mm, nice little that's cool. thing that had far reaching effects everywhere. So it, it really is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So don't just read those tea recipes. It's like, think about the, the container that you're creating and you're holding that tea space for your your family so yeah good that's great you've incorporated that awesome yeah. so the other thing <clears throat> that I'm really big on is is activating your spice rack that's number two and what I love about that is you know when I when my um, editor came to me and said you can write an herb book on anything you want it's like oh man what do I what what am I gonna write it on and I did I thought about that a lot I thought about what what do people really need and um, where can I really start where people are at to bring, because my, my goal is to change the culture. I want to create and inspire a new culture uh, that raises up children that honor the earth and know how to take care of themselves so that we can get past some of these just really horrific statistics that our children are, are facing. And so, you know, spice rack. So I decided to write it on the earth and spices that people already have in their kitchen and it's kind of popular now but when I when my book came out it, it wasn't it was um, <clears throat> people were I just remember just being kind of like a not that it's the first time that that's been written about but I really wanted to start where people are at and the amazing thing is is that probably everybody listening right now has a spice rack or has a cabinet that has at least three herbs or spices in it, and that's what you can start with. You can start with what's in your kitchen already, whether it just be cinnamon and black pepper, or, you know, you've got those, some people have their spices that they've had there for years, like pull them out, take a look at them, see which ones you like, and then I like to have, um, again, in my book, The Herbal Kitchen, I have a lot of spice blends, but you can just mix, like, you can just put cinnamon, and you get um, a salt and pepper shaker, salt shaker, and you put your powdered spices, or just one, you know, get some powdered thyme, get some powdered cinnamon and just put it on the table and just take it out of the spice rack and put it on the table and see what people do with it and start sprinkling it on your food and your kids quickly learn that the time doesn't go on the oatmeal <laughs> um, but it really it's you know we have a lazy Susan so this I we have a lazy Susan on our table and people are our friends now because the kids come over like mom I want a lazy Susan I want that and what it does is it just puts the herbs and spices right in the middle of the dinner table and people start playing 
feel like, what's that? What's that? And it just helps people connect. And it uh, helps your children, your family really develop their um, taste scape, like what goes with what and learning how to pair what goes what. Or you'll, you'll notice that your people in your family will go through like um, periods where like all they eat is all they eat. All of a sudden, everybody's just always using the paprika, you know? Or I was about to say that one. <laughs> yeah, they go on these spurts, and you're like, what's up? Why is everybody eating all the chives? But it's like it becomes innate. They develop their own um, intuition and innate connection, because it's, and it's, it's right there by their food. And when you have guests over, they, they're like, whoa, that's, what, what is that? That's really cool. So it's a, just a super simple way. Again, I'm about like, how do you bring it into everyday life so that you can connect? Because you can study for years. I have many, many students that come, especially students that have studied acupuncture or really high level degrees in herbal medicine, but they haven't connected. You know, it's all, it's all study. And it's really about like, what, what plant are you connected with? Which spices do you really connect and understand and really feel a relationship with? And so that's another way to really, you know, it's easy. Yeah, absolutely. And this, the spice rack was the it's spice rack hack, right? It was so empowering because like you said, we have them up in the cabinet, but the only ones we know how to use are salt and pepper. And so that's all we mm -hmm. have out on the table. And right. the prevalence of processed food in our culture has really desensitized us to any kind of flavor. And so this is why people think healthy food tastes bad because when you go from processed food to whole food and you're only using salt and pepper, well, there's no artificial flavor packet to sprinkle on it. We don't know how to use our spices anymore. We don't know what goes with what. We don't know how to mix it or use it. And so that was huge to see just how simple it is. Smell it, mix them together, put it on your table. It's there. You sprinkle that instead of salt and pepper or in addition to. And another mm -hmm. thing I love about your book is, like you said, it's so simple and practical but powerful at the same time and I think what happens to the game changers is that we want to take people and lasso them and drag them to where we are and that causes a bigger disconnection right mm -hmm. but understanding that to meet people where they are you have to mm -hmm. do things that are comfortable to them like sage and thyme, like that's up there. Mm -hmm. it, it's just right there. And it, they're, so, mm -hmm. they're powerful herbs without even mm -hmm. knowing it. And so getting them in our meals every day have powerful effects on our body. Oh, the funniest story about the spice rack hack. So I got my kids out there um, and we took out all the spices and I had them say which ones are pleasant, which ones are unpleasant. And we mix them all together and put them on the table. If I would have cooked meals with spices, no way would they have touched them. But I put the spices mm -hmm. on the table, guess what they're doing? They're fighting over each other's little spice containers to shake them on their meals. They're fighting over herbs. It's adorable. <laughs> and they're using herbs. And it's the one fight that I don't correct them. I just sit back and I'm like, yeah, you guys fight over your herbs. <laughs> right. <clears throat> Right. I, I, I watched my students over the years be trying to drag their families along. Right. Um, and it, it, it never really, I, I saw it doesn't work. <laughs> and so a lot of what I'm talking about is just creating the space for them, creating the, the, the space and the place for them to connect on their own. And they'll, it, it'll change how they feel too. I mean, your, your, your common kitchen herbs and spices, they're all carminative, which means it helps you to digest your food. And so when they start getting that digestive support every day, after a while it adds up and they notice it. And so you, it really does change the way people feel and the way they um, just connect with their bodies and their health. It's very, very powerful. Yeah, and most of them are also, you know, antimicrobial and um, circulatory stimulant. So you feel energetic, you get sick less, you're digesting better, so you're thinking better, and you feel better just from having some spices on your table that were up mm -hmm. in your cabinet anyway, just getting ignored. It's so right. simple, but so effective. And I, I just love the practicality. Right. 
They're, they're actually the bridge to our digestion. They're the bridge to nutrition. And part of, you know, not only is fast food just not, it's just not good for us, but again, like you said, they're not using, they're not flavoring with herbs and spices, they're flavoring with chemicals. And so there's nothing in that food to help you to digest it. All traditional foods are flavored with some sort of herb and spice to help you digest and deal. Digesting food is, is big business. It's, it's hard. It, it takes a lot of energy. And we need those herbs and spices in our food and so you really um, having them out on the table even if you're going to eat something that's not so just make sure whatever you I, I like to say a carminative at every meal yeah so I love that and I pass that on to my college nutrition students I'm like Cammy McBride says carminative at every meal try it experiment like see see how you feel and it's fabulous. And something else you said just reminded me of what herbalist um, Guido Massé says in his book is, you know, we all think we have this fast food problem, but really it may be a little bit different. What we have is a lack of herbs problem. Because like you said, it's not like those flavoring packets are real herbs. They're synthetic chemicals to taste like those herbs. And so without that support, you're not digesting your food. You're not getting nutrients. If you don't have nutrients, your cells can't work. You can't think. You get sick. Nothing functions the way it's supposed to. So really, even if where you are is eating fast food and processed food, put those herbs on your table and sprinkle it on them. Like if that's where you are, do that, right? You'll still yeah. get the benefit of those herbs. Yeah, it's so, it's so good. I mean, sometimes I, I you know, um, when I was writing The Herbal Kitchen, I had this whole contemplation about, isn't it just incredible that those herbs and spices are in our house? They've just been, they're just sitting there waiting for us to remember. Yeah. They're there. They're, they're not just there for flavor. That's not how they ended up there. They ended up there because they're, they're the earth healing us inside our homes it's just we've over a couple generations we just forgot everything that they were used for but they're still there they're just waiting for us to remember they're just sitting there doo -doo -doo. <laughs> and so it's an, it's an awakening we're just awakening and remembering and they're just again they're just sitting there waiting for us yeah and the great thing about the herbal kitchen is a lot of those herbs are so easy to grow and even on your windowsill and something else we've disconnected with is our sense of creativity and our ownership of oh I watered this and I planted it and I watched it grow and now it's gonna become me and help me and people think they have to have land to plant things you can you can have sage and thyme on your windowsill and watch your medicine grow right in front of you and there's something really empowering yeah. and magical about that. Yeah. 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 So the third thing that I really, I'm, I'm big on just is, is herbal oils and those aren't quite as easy to incorporate. They're not as simple as like the spice rack or the teas. You do have to take a little bit and learn how to make your herbal oils, but it doesn't take that much effort. And I'm really big on the oils because, um, you know, it's like you, you can make one oil and have it for the entire year. And so it's like least amount of effort for maximum return, which a lot of my moms really like. <laughs> and, and then it's for, there's just dozens of things that your herbal oils, so just, let's just say calendula oil, for example, you know, just your skincare, you know, helping with mood your lymph. There's just so many things that the herbal oils, the herbal infused oils, not as essential oils are good for and your kids can just slop around in them <laughs> you know you can oil your feet you can oil your body you can moisturize you can it's used for first aid um, so I really love just getting a learning how to make one or two herbal uh, infused oils and just handing them over to your family and just let them figure it out like, oh I need it on my lips oh I need it you know oh wow when I oil my head I feel so relaxed right and so or herbal oils are a part of our everyday um, health care routine we, we use them every day we use them before bed we oil our feet we oil our ears we 
oil our scalp. Um, we use them for relaxation. We use them for cold and flu prevention because keeping your skin and limp oiled helps keep your immune system functioning well. The major, major, you know, drying out. You don't realize it when you're younger, but when you get older, dryness. You're just constantly battling dryness. And so staying moist is a really a very um, specific immune support to keep your keep your immune system, keep your lymph from drying out. And that's not something that you know people really talk about that much. Mm -hmm. But staying moisturized, staying oiled is so uh, it's, it's so amazing. And uh, depending on where you live, it can have more significance. And my family, they dry out. They just, they dry out. And if we stay, we're, we're nicer to each other when we're oiled. <laughs> you know, if somebody's starting to get grouchy, I'm like, let me see your skin. Oh, you're all dried out. No wonder you're grouchy, right? You can just see the dehydration, the puckered lips, the, you know, you, your, your nervous system also lives right under your skin. And so when you start to get dried out you get grouchy so we like we say that oiling keeps us happy <laughs> man that explains so much because you know because <laughs> you know i was saying um i really i knew very early on that i was not going to put those skincare products on my body so i went mm -hmm. decades with no lotion no chapstick oh, oh gosh and I, I was pretty grouchy in my earlier years too. <laughs> um, but once I learned how to make herbal oils from you, and um, I'm going to link to your the free videos you have on your site um, down below. You guys just look for that. I was like, oh my gosh, I can have chapstick again, and I can have lotion again. And um, I love how you mentioned one oil goes a long way. Like we have calendula oil, and every everything that happens, my kids are like, "I have this." I'm like, "Get the Cali oil." I have this. Get the Cali oil. Um, put calendula oil on your dry lips. Put it on your scratches. Put it on your rashes. Put it on this and that. It's fabulous. Um, oh, and a great story. So I I was telling Cami how we're getting ready to sell the house. So I've been moving nonstop all day every day and I knew I was going to be sore. Well, I learned from Cami's class that um, arnica oil can be not the essential oil, right? Arnica infused oil can be used preventatively. Like if you know you overdid it, put it on the night before, it'll decrease your symptoms. And I was like, I'm going to go get in my tub, I'm putting oil in it, I'm getting out, I'm self-massaging. and. I don't know how bad I would have felt, but I tell you, I survived. And so, <laughs> <That's great. laughs> and it is, it's just about having it there and it's not going to run out. You know, you make a ton and you have it all year, like you said. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of those ones that really helps uh, establish connection. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm, I'm a woman over 50 with a teenage child. And so for some reason I attract a lot of women like that to my classes and moms of all ages actually and, and also women that um, don't have kids or their kids are grown and they just have always wanted to be get into herbs right now they have the time oh. and this this technique um, it's so awesome because it's a nurturing technique and you can um, if you have kids at home you can nurture yourself and your child at the same time which is such a big deal we just give and give and give and this this is something that it's, you know, I love these home herbalism techniques that you can use every day um, that not only nurture you, but at the same time, just teach your kids how to take care of themselves because that's what we want. Do we want to be that family that sends the kid off that doesn't have any home remedy tools or do we want to be the family that puts our kid out into the world? They know how to take care of themselves and they're not susceptible and at risk to all the constant barrage of advertisement right and so as you know at some point your kids don't want to listen to you so you just have to have these things in place so that they just learn it because that's the culture of your household yeah oh that that touches my heart because I really do think that trying to avoid the toxins and self-care products created and it is kind of part of our culture too to not value self-care but I had literally zero self-care at all. Mm -hmm. um, and it was from avoiding products, but also from not ever being taught that. And I think that was such a huge benefit I got from you being my teacher is now I know when to stop, 
Now I know when to take care of myself. I know how to take care of myself without toxins. And like you said, my kids are watching me do that. Like my kids are going to know when to slow down, when they need self-care. In fact, my nine-year-old says all the time, um, mom, I'm listening to my body. I'm going to sit down. Oh, that is so <laughs> awesome. Yeah. And <laughs> I, ne- I just now started saying that, you know what I mean? So it's, mm-hmm. it's stopping that cycle mm-hmm. and that culture of going until you're spent and then mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. passing those skills on to your kids. I love that. And it, it really is a game changer. And think about how much better our world will be if people were taking care of themselves so they can take care of other people better and we're not all cranky and dried out and mean all the time. (laughs) (laughs) Dry and cranky, right. (laughs) I really, uh, that resonated with me, man. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. You'll you'll see that now. When people are, when people get dried out, they get, they get cranky. (laughs) I love it. Well, it makes sense. Like your nerves are frayed and yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so we've talked about activating your spice rack, getting your tea station going, bringing oils deeper into your everyday life. And so the last one, again, it's not, it's a little bit um, not one of the most popular herbal techniques, um, but it's one that I, well, first of all, I really like it. And I've just seen people fall in love with it, and that is taking herbal baths. And so, again, it's not as easy as just, like, whipping out some tea or activating your spice rack, but it's one if you just take a little extra time, oh, my gosh, the rewards are just incredible. And so I love, um, and I remember my son being, like, eight years old in the bathtub, and he was like, Mom, where's the rose petals? (laughs) I just completely forgot to put herbs in his bath. He's like, where, where are the rose petals, mom? Like it, like it just was like, that's what we do. It was like drawing the water you put in the herbs and he, he, I had to go downstairs and get, get the rose petals, right? Yeah, <laughs> and so if you get the herbs, see, because what you do in the bathtub is you relax and you go inside and you hopefully take some time. And what happens is it's a, a space where you can absorb and integrate and take in the scents and the colors of the plant plants on a deeper level you're just laying there watching them float around and the aroma and so there's just something to taking that time and having the herbs help you and maybe maybe you're not one of a, a tea drinker but you can get herbs into your bathtub and you learn so like just putting rose petals or chamomile fresh or dried or some rosemary it's just so nurturing nurturing and nourishing and uh you just it's a great way to uh, connect with the plants on a deeper level. And, um, and yeah, I just, I love just putting, getting those herbs into the bathtub. And if you start your children out young doing that, well, you can do any age depending whatever, but if you get them young doing that, they're just like, Oh, that's what we do. So I love getting herbs into the bathtub. That's my fourth pillar. Yeah. I love that so much. And I think, I think it's one of those things that if someone's never heard of this, they may be like, like, how's that work, right? Like, how's that actually going to help me? And there's science that explains it. It's just biology. Like, the aromatic oils go into your nose. They go straight to your limbic system and affect your mood. They're going through your skin. Mm -hmm. The oils are. Like, they're entering your body and affecting you while you're relaxing or while you're trying to get energized. And oh man, Cami, I gotta tell you this. So my kids just this summer have started this business. Um, business, it's me giving them all my money. Um, <laughs> but what they do is they have a massage business and it starts off with a foot bath. And they oh yeah, go- good. And they ask me if I need to relax or if I need energy. If I need to relax, you know, it's lavender or chamomile. If I need energy, it's rosemary or eucalyptus. Because we we grow all these things. But even if you don't, you can buy them off the spice aisle, right? They're there. And then after my foot bath, which I learned from you, um, then they make me go lay down on the bed. And then they get the herb-infused oil and they massage me. 
And so. Oh, you're training them right, girl. I know. By the end of that, I feel so good that I'm like tipping them and giving them all my money. <laughs> so there, it's a very That's awesome. big business for them. <laughs> their that's own great company, but it's training. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome training. Yeah, and you know, so herbal bathing, it, it's a powerful healing therapy that it, it actually can be incorporated into a busy lifestyle. And it, it really does. It, it, it You can tame your stress. Um, and if I'm like in a funk, like if I'm, like I live on the coast and sometimes it's gray here for days and it, it's, it really affects me and if I'm if I, I have to remember if I'm just starting to go down or something's a little off I get into the bathtub and I put those herbs in the bathtub and I take an herbal bath and that herbal bath afterglow it can last all day long right and, and when you drink tea it just absorbs through you know the mucous membrane that's exposed this way but when you put the herbs in your bath you think of all your skin tissues it's like soaking your body in a cup of tea you're, you're you're you know all of your skin is receiving the medicine from from the herbs and it's it's, it's very powerful so so yeah. for someone who's never heard of this get so how do you take an herbal tea bath like what how can they do that so you just you, you can just start with putting a half a cup of half a cup to a cup or more of fresh or dried herb and what you can do is you can just throw it in there you know have it be a big old mess or you can tie it like in a sock or a little piece of fabric or you can buy like little pouches and you put the herb inside the pouch and then you actually tie it on the spigot as the water is being drawn and then you leave it in the bathtub so you can either throw it in loose or you can wrap it in something like a nylon or just even a little piece of muslin just tie it up put a rubber band around it and then just hang it on the spigot draw the water through it or or you don't even have to do that you can just throw it in your bathtub and just kind of squeeze it to make sure it gets um, more you'll see the color and everything coming out of it. And so it's really, what we do is we make up like 20 of those with dry, we take our dried herbs, like we love rose petal baths. So we take our dried rose petals and we just make up 20 of those little pouches and keep them in, in the bathroom, in the cabinet. And so when it's, just throw it in. Yeah, and it, I think that it can sound intimidating if you don't know how simple it is. Like take your orphan socks that don't have matches anymore Throw some dry herbs. Uh, how many of those do you have? A minute. Put them up in your cabinet. There you go. Like it's not right. complicated. And you know that I love right. Rosemary Gladstar's forward in your book because I think it's really true. The herbal kitchen is really what herbalism is about. It's about getting those plants that are around us for us and using them. Like, just using them, not thinking of them as symptom suppressors or, oh, I only use them when I'm sick. It's, I eat them at every meal. I bathe with them. I rub them on my body. I use them when I'm tired. I use them when I'm stressed. I, they're just, they are part of our life, and it's second nature. Mm -hmm. But only if you get your head out of the book <laughs> and do it, right? I think that's such an important thing because there's so much to learn now. And there's so much information and you can take class after class after class after class after class if you have the internet. But unless you put the book down and get into the bath or get into the kitchen or put your foot in a basin with some herbs, you're not going to get the benefit. Yeah, and that, that's how you develop your connection because, you know, the, you're – you can read forever about what's good, good for you, what you're supposed to do, or what you should be doing. But that's not how herbalism is. That's not what herbalism is about. It's about your relationship with the plants. And the only way to develop the, re or not, there's, there's many ways to develop your relationship. But if you're a householder, you're busy, you're, you know, taking, you know, you've got those 36 hands and you're doing it all. If they, they we need them in our daily lives in order to develop that connection. And that is what comes through for us in the long run. Because, you know, when life is amazing, if there's like a lot of really great things and also life is very challenging. Life can be very challenging. And when the times come that you're super challenged, that's when you really need the herbs. I mean, you need them all the time, but especially during those challenging times, they can really help you. But if you're at one of those times where, 
you know, you can't remember your name mm -hmm. or life is just really throwing one at you. It's the plants that you have a connection with that will come to you. It's not going to be like, oh, I got to look at my book. What are you gonna, what, what are you? It's like the ones that you've developed that relationship with and that you love. Those are the ones that are going to be effortlessly be like, oh, yeah, I need to do this. Right. So, yeah, you have to make them um, second nature when you're calm and chill and connect and collected so that when you're stressed, it's already habit. You don't have to learn and think yeah. and figure it out. And so, yeah, you can't wait until you're sick. You can't wait. <laughs> so, like, <we're> not <laughs> oh, I love it. So these... These are amazing, simple, practical, huge tips. And you, I'm going to put links down below that you can get it from Cammie's um, free video course or from her book or from her website. She has so many resources I'm going to lead you guys to. But before I let her go, um, I have one last question. So something I love to ask all my guests is what is something that you wish people would ask you to tell them, but they never do. Oh, but they never do. Okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, I'm not sure how they would ask that. Let's see. Or something. What I wish people teach. Yeah, what I wish people would would ask more or um this is what comes like second. Uh, everybody wants to know what to take for this cold or what do I take for my arthritis and underneath that is how do I give back to the earth how do I take care of the plants oh. how can I how can I give back to the plants how can I say thank you to the plants for the gifts that they've given me and so it, it's this thing of okay you know, we know we're shredding the biosphere. We know that species are going extinct daily. And part of those species going extinct are the plants. But we want the plants in our kitchen, in our spice rack. The plants come from the earth. So how do we care for the earth so that we can have these amazing plants? How do we care for the water so that we can have these incredible plants? And so that is a question that has actually uh, been driving my teaching uh, for almost 30 years. Because if you're not raised with the seventh generation principle in mind of, okay, I live and act sustainably so future generations can live, um, and how to make my actions so that it benefits seven generations in front of me. If you're not raised like that, how do you get to that place? That is the one question that drives my entire career, my entire adult life. I've been teaching, I've been awakening my memory of working and um, honoring the plants since I was in, since my entire adult life. And that is the question that I had is how do we get to that place if we're not raised with it? And so how can you get to that place? You know, it's like you think of okay, everybody wants elderberry syrup now. It's like I love I've got my elderberry syrup, but we're having to import elderberries further and further and further away. I mean, everybody's out of elderberries right now. Yeah, the store has elderberries from Croatia. I'm like, that's a native plant. Oh, no, they're, they're from further and further and further away. So <laughs> what does that mean? So as an herbalist, as somebody that's interested in herbs, we are the earth tenders. Mm -hmm. We are the ones that care for the earth. We want the plants. It's a natural connection to be the one that says, oh, what are the, what's, my, what's, what's, what's my region like? What's happening? Oh, that plant is, is thriving. That plant plants not what do I need to do and so we all need to be we need to plant elderberries <laughs> whatever and, and you may not be in a situation to be able to plant it's, okay that's fine but it's like to, to so then you ask what is your what can you do what can you do to um, help with this with nurturing the earth and caring for the earth and the water and it's just like I said it's a natural connection for us as herbalists as as people who um, homemakers that are that want the plants they don't just come in plastic bags from our distributor they come from a place and the more connected and the more we know about that place and the closer we can get them to us um then we'll be able to continue doing this Ooh, i think oh i'm kind of speechless <laughs> 
life. Oh, I have so many things. That is so important. And, you know, the food, the locavore food movement has really mm -hmm. um, important. And a lot more people are getting way more connected to their food locally. But like you said, we can be just as disconnected from our herbs as we are from our food. And I, on, I mean, I, I learned about, I got interested in herbs because I was a gardener. So that, that never really occurred to me, but yeah, if I'm buying herbs in a plastic bag and I don't know where they come from, or they come from Croatia when it grows in your backyard, that disconnect, that's having a global impact. That is exacerbating the very problem that we're trying to avoid in, mm -hmm. in the first place. Mm -hmm. And another thing is it. Yeah. So we don't want to, we don't want to make people wrong for where they're at, right. Right? but you're, you're not. But I just want to say that because I see that energy. You, yeah. We are where we are and we just take one step. We take one step with maybe there's one herb, you know, local food, local medicine, urban farm, urban pharmacy. It's the same thing. And all those local food, local farm, local, those are all those places are one step away from planting all the medicine. They're not only going to, they can, you know, your, your, your food and your medicine grows in the same place. Yeah. So it's just a little bit of a consciousness shift to go, Oh, local food, local medicine. Yeah. I love that. And the other important thing is I do think when we come into herbs, it's like, what can the herbs do for me? Because that's, that's where it starts. Of course, of course, this. How do of course. I do this? That's just team. That's yes. Yeah. Help. Yeah. Help. And then <laughs> it's important to complete that circle. Okay, good. Now I know what they can do for me. What can I do for them? So they can keep doing that for me and it keeps going and going. So, oh, I, that was really powerful. I'm glad you brought that up. And I think it's so important. Great. Well, I got to tell you, I was really exhausted before we started this podcast and now I'm just energized and I feel, <laughs> I just love it. So thank you. I feel uplifted and I'm just going to rewatch this anytime I'm tired. And I really appreciate you sharing these practical tips of how to take herbalism and turn it into a culture with ourselves, with our self care, with our families, and then in our community. It's, it's a really important movement and I appreciate you for dedicating your, your life to, to spreading that shift. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks Lori. Thanks for what you're doing and thanks for having me. Thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful evening. Yeah. Thanks Lori. Bye Cammy. Thank you so much for listening to the Weight Free Wellness Podcast. You can find the links that Lori mentioned at weightfreewellness.com, episode number 73. And please do share it with any friends or family that you could think would benefit or enjoy the information. And we love hearing from you. Say hi on Facebook. Leave us a review on Facebook or iTunes to let us know what you're enjoying and help those people who are looking for quality sources of wellness information know that this is a great source for them. Also check out the ColumbianCoffeeConnection.com. They're also on Facebook and all those cool things out there too. And get on the list to get your specialty micro batch coffee. Thanks for listening. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.